It is an absolutely picture-perfect night weather-wise for baseball in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And we welcome you to Miller Park. The Cincinnati Reds in town to take on the National League Central Division leading Milwaukee Brewers. And hi again, everybody, alongside Chris Welsh and Jim Day. I'm Tom Brenneman. Great to have you with us for Reds baseball. And needless to say, Chris, we're only in the middle of June, but this is a big road trip for the Red Legs. Well, it is, because when you're playing the team that's the top of the division, a team that is simply running away with everything right now, you've got to take business in your own hands. And there's no pressure at all on the Brewers. I mean, right now, they're just rolling right along. They're having fun. They're coming back from New York last night where they had a, a win in 13 innings. They're eight games ahead of the Reds. The Reds have to figure out a way to stop them, starting with tonight. Well, the last time we saw the Brewers, you may remember, they came rolling into Great American Ballpark, sporting the best record in all of baseball. They were 20-7 and seven before the Reds beat them three out of four. And really, since then, they've been pretty much a 500 team. Well, you're right about that. I mean, even the team that they have demolished the most, which is the Pittsburgh Pirates, they are 10 wins and three losses against the Pirates. Against everybody else, it's rather pedestrian win-loss record. But they did have the best start in team history through the first 67 games. Their earned run average is very good. They still have a very potent lineup, and right now they feel like that they're the team to beat in the league, and so far they are. And their best offensive player is no longer Ryan Braun. Well, you're right about that. It is a birthday boy, Jonathan Lucroy, who, by the way, tonight turns 28 years old. He's right in the middle of the order, having one of the best years a catcher has ever had. He's a clutch hitter. He stays inside the ball. He makes contact. He came up with a big hit last night to win a ball game. And, you know, it's one of these things where you've got to pitch around certain guys of the order. He's the one guy in this lineup that I always want to know where he is and if he's in the on-deck circle. And that was a home run in the 13th inning last night to beat the Mets by a final count of 3-1. to one. We look back on the Reds' homestand. Had it not been for the last two days, not so good. But everybody back now, and they're hoping that winning the final two games against the Dodgers has them going in the right direction. Well, it doesn't happen all at once. I mean, you get healthy. It doesn't mean all of a sudden you're going to go out there and dominate the other team. I mean, that it would be nice to think that, but it doesn't always work that way. But by winning the last couple of games against Los Angeles Dodgers, you build some momentum. You look around the clubhouse and you say, hey, you know what? This is where we thought we were going to be from day one. Now we are there, so let's start playing some real baseball. And, of course, a big part of that is Joey Votto coming back. Well, Joey Votto gives you a presence in the lineup that he can hit any kind of pitching, left-handed hitting, pitching, right-handed pitching, it doesn't matter. He drives the ball all over the ballpark. And you see since he's returned from the DL, he's batting 400, a couple of runs batted in. So Joey Votto is a force to be reckoned with, there's no doubt about it. Well, we're going to be a little while to get started here tonight. The Brewers are starting what is called the Wall of Honor here tonight where so many of their greats will now be recognized inside of this ballpark to a lesser extent like the Reds Hall of Fame and Museum. So we've got a little ways to go before game time. When we come back, a couple of baseball guys getting together. Todd Frazier and Jim Day.
Whispers coming up from Miller Park in Milwaukee. Hi again, everyone. I'm Jim Day. Pleasure to welcome in Todd Frazier. And uh, you guys got to feel pretty good coming in here. Uh, winning two straight against the Dodgers. I know you wanted to win a series. Those four gamers are tough to win, but you get a split. And a uh, pretty good opportunity to make up at least a little bit of ground on some teams ahead of you here. Yeah, this is huge. Uh, definitely coming into Milwaukee, knowing they're the big dogs on top. Uh, you're always fighting to get that big guy. And, uh, you know, basically, if you're in first, you're last. So we got to get we got to get after him. We got to get him early, win today, and uh, roll right through the series. There's a lot of people that when you ask them how big a series is or a moment in the season, they'll say, well, it's one of 162. And you know the cliches that go out there. But you've been a guy that's basically it's important now. And you know that this is an important road trip. Am I reading you correctly? No, exactly. And I think every game is. Uh, you know, you don't want to look back in the year and be like, oh, man, these, these two games we lost, the could the should have. And uh, for us right now, we, we do have, we have a couple of those still. Uh, we can look back and say, you know, if we just did this. So right now, let's start over. Let's start with the Brewers. Let, let's chomp down on that lead. And uh, right before the break, let's cut a little closer where we need to be. Let's be realistic. When you look at the numbers of guys at third base, you are leading in a lot of categories in the National League and haven't got really the National Pub yet. Uh, would you like to be considered for the All-Star game? Oh, yeah, definitely. That's definitely a dream come true. Uh, right now, you know, I just got to keep on fighting for this team to get wins. Um, you know, individual stuff, like like I said, my family always told me, worry about the team stuff, and that individual stuff will take care of itself, whether it's um, getting the numbers I want or maybe, you know, getting considered for an all-star team. And I think that would be awesome. Um, you know, let the number speak for itself. So by the time that all-star you know, break comes around, hopefully it's, it's the same and where I need to be. You've been one of the vocal guys, uh, just your personality <coughs> in the dugout with this team. Now that you've been in the league a few years and you're putting up some numbers there amongst the league leaders, do you feel like that you could be a leader on this team? Of course. I, I think I can be a leader. I, I've done it before. Um, you know, when you're younger, you try to be a leader. Uh, I've tried to do it all my life. I'm not afraid to. You know, the thing about being a leader, you either got to lead on the field or you got to be the guy that gives constructive criticism to people so they understand what's going on. And, you know, both of those things I think I can do. Is Brian Pena a, a menace? To society, yes. He's standing right here. That's in case people are wondering. Uh, Brian, what do you think about about? Come on in. What, what, what do you think about this guy? I think he's the best guy I ever met. <laughs> <laughs> he's just happy because we made a little friendly bet about the San Antonio Spurs. So uh -oh. yeah, they're kicking butt. So who has the Spurs? He does, and I got the Heat, so I'm in trouble. <laughs> you are a little bit in trouble right now. Yes. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Let's go Reds. How about that? How about that one? One last question. It's Friday the 13th, and you got a full moon. Are you superstitious at all? No, not at all. I like full moons. Probably get a little more loud and a little more energetic like a wolf at night, baby. Let's roll. <laughs> That's Todd Frazier, and there he goes. Stay with us around the corner. We'll sit it back up to the booth. Homer Bailey's been pitching well of late. They'll break down the pitching matchup and more. Brewers and Reds straight ahead on Fox Sports Live.
by Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. By AT&T mobilizing your world. And by Skyline Chili feeling good. It's Skyline time. We welcome you back to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The Reds and the Brewers about 10 minutes away from the first pitch tonight. And our pitching matchup, a couple of talented young right-handers. And we begin with the guy who's getting better and better as this season is moving forward, and that's Homer Bailey. Well, what Homer said after his last start, it was a very good one. You know, he has no doubt that he would eventually get it all together. He's finally getting his rhythm together. His fastball command is so much better. And you see what his last four starts has brought Homer Bailey. A 4-0 record, an earned run average right around three. Little by little, that earned run average that was way out of whack. Early in the year is coming down to reasonableness, and he is looking for a win, and he's pitched very well the last four or five games here against the Brewers. He'll be facing Matt Garza, another right-hander, nine innings and 13 runs, four home runs allowed in his last couple of starts against the Reds. He's a pretty good pitcher. Garza is. He's a paddler, but he's a guy that seems to always be in trouble out there. He'll go six innings and throw about 105 pitches or so. Four and four record overall on the year. Garza versus Homer Bailey tonight. A couple of right-handers that we will see which one of these righties prevails. And this is a big game setting the tone perhaps for this entire weekend series. Bailey v. Garza in the opener. Let the conversation begin about yet another red pitcher who could be going to the All-Star game. How about Jonathan Broxton and the role he is on? He's given up one run all year. That and more next.
removed, surprisingly enough, in this retractable dome, Miller Park is sealed tightly from above. Brewers have taken the field defensively. Let's take a look at Brian Price's starting lineup presented by Meyer. All hands on deck for the first time all year long when Matt Latos returns tomorrow. Hamilton, Frazier, and Bono to start it. Brandon Phillips, Jay Bruce, very good career numbers against the Milwaukee starter, Matt Garza, and Mezzarocco to the six hole. Schumacher, Cozart, and Bailey, the latter third. Now, Matt Garza now 30 years old, coming off a win his last time out. They've afforded him a fair amount of runs when he takes the mound, but he is primarily a six inning pitcher, so the bullpen will have something to do with this. At some point in the ball game, when usually when Garza takes them out, not an overpowering pitcher. He struck out 65 and 79 innings, and not really much of a ground ball pitcher either. A guy that just figures out oftentimes how to get out of problems, and he isn't a fair amount of problems because he's not afraid to walk a batter or two along the way. But Tom, you've watched him for a long time, ever since really he was drafted by the Minnesota Twins in 2005, and you've seen him throughout all of his stops and you've always been a guy that's been kind of impressed with the way he's gone about his business. Well, he certainly hit the lottery when they gave him that contract this year. I think it stunned everybody, especially after he was traded from the Cubs to the Texas Rangers. And they were expecting him to give him a big boost to get in the playoffs. And it just simply did not happen. First year of a four year deal here in Milwaukee. So we're set to go. Billy Hamilton to lead things off. Billy, a 252 batter, a couple of home runs, 14 runs batted in, 24 stolen bases. And here we go for a big weekend series. Red's starting to feel like for the first time all year they have everybody healthy again. And that this is the team that figured to be contenders in the National League Central. We're about to find out over the next couple of weeks. Hamilton to butt. Aranis Ramirez, his throw, what a play by Aranis Ramirez. Doesn't get much better than that. Well, when you're expecting a bunt, and you lay a bunt down, and it's a pretty good one right there, and it's still bang, bang at first base. I mean, there's Billy Hamilton forcing the Brewer defense to make a play. They did it. They retire him, but that's a good defensive play by the veteran third baseman. Ramirez just came off the disabled list. He's been bothered by a tender hamstring, so perhaps Hamilton wanting to test that right from the get-go. But Ramirez up to the task, and now it's Todd Frazier. One pitch and one out. Frazier had the big home run in the first inning on the first pitch in his at-bat against Zach Greinke. They got the Reds off and running, and that's all Alfredo Simon needed. What a game he had again yesterday, wow. leading the National League with nine wins on the year. There's a rocket into left field. Garza trying to challenge Frazier with a fastball. He might think about that differently the next time up. Milwaukee on defense, presented by your four dealers. Davis Gomez brought in the outfield. Palou the shortstop for the struggling Gene Segura. Mark Reynolds sharing playing time at first with Lyle Overbay and Lou Croy having one whale of a year on offense and behind the plate. Now Joey Votto, four of ten since coming off the disabled list. A couple of doubles, a couple of runs batted in. And he's down strike one. A lot of fastballs already for Matt Garza, the guy that's not afraid. He challenged Todd Frazier two pitches in a row of fastballs. Frazier got the wood on the second one. He goes right after Votto with the same pitch. That's kind of an old school way of going about things. And of course, the Brewers tonight with their indoctrination of what? About 50 players into their wall of honor, is it? Brought onto the field beforehand. A lot of those guys knew what it was like to try to pitch through that lineup the first time, really throwing nothing but fastballs, and then break your other stuff out the second and ter third time through. Otto, a fly ball into straightaway center field. And 
Gomez has it for the second out of the inning, and that ball comes through the infield. And Lucroy there to back it up. Amato doesn't want to hit him out there. He has been robbed a couple of different times. Once on a defensive walk-off play by Carlos Gomez, who seems to have Joey Votto's number when it comes to reaching over the fence and bringing back balls that were destined to be home runs and turn them into outs. They got him here last year, and then he got him in Great American Ballpark already this year. So only five pitches to go through the first three batters for Matt Garza. And now it'll be Brandon Phillips. Keep an eye on that left index finger of Phillips, which forced him to leave the game yesterday. Frazier takes off, and Garza such a sloppy play, and the runner stands at third. I mean, he had Frazier with any sort of regular throw out by 10 feet, and what in the world is this? I mean, he doesn't even step into the throw. He just flips it over there. He short hops the infielder. And all of a sudden, that's a play that you would see coming with Billy Hamilton on the base pass, where his speed makes the defense make mistakes. But not Todd Frazier. Or maybe Todd Frazier. I'm sure they got to give that a stolen base and then a throwing error, advancing the runner on to third. I don't know if you have to give it a stolen base or not. Why would you? I mean, I'm all for Todd Frazier getting stolen bases. Don't get me wrong. Well, I don't know how else you would score it. A two base error? Yeah. A caught stealing? You have to account for two bases there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Maybe they could call it caught stealing and then a throwing error. I don't know. Well, we know Frazier standing at third base. And the Reds are fortunate to still be batting. And Brandon Phillips now has a chance to knock in the game's first run. He might be trying to figure that out down there right now. I don't think we have heard a scoring decision yet. And there's a line drive in the right field. A base hit by Phillips. So Garza pays the price early. For a terrible play at second base, and the Reds have a one-nothing lead. Well, Brandon Phillips just when he uses the entire field, he becomes one dangerous hitter at the plate. He's been very consistent all year long, right around that 270 mark where he is right now. And he picks up run batted in number 24. Now we have seen Garza during his days with the Cubs. He is a very emotional young man gets very upset with himself shows his emotions and his frustrations out on the mound so that is certainly something to keep an eye on boy he handed the Reds this run and maybe more On Jay Bruce. Now Phillips has only attempted three stolen bases all year long. He's been thrown out two of the three. Big, big two out clutch hit by Brandon Phillips. And the Reds are looking for more. 2 0 to Jay Bruce. And there's a strike. Marvin Hudson behind the plate tonight. The crew chief works at first base, Brian Onora. Doug Eddings, the umpire at second, and Corey Blazer is at third.
Bruce tonight steel power tool performers 24 home runs against the Brewers since 2008 the most by any player in Major League Baseball Joey Votto third on that list that's a good list Bruce Andrew McCutcheon Joey Votto Matt Holliday Paid a lot of attention to Brandon Phillips over there. Yeah, Brandon really hasn't run all that much. And if you're thinking about Garza, whether you can sustain the running game against him, in his career, he's been pretty good about shutting the running game down. He has not given up a stolen base yet this year. In fact, there have been no attempts. Three balls and two strikes to Jay Bruce. And it now is you believe uh, Reynolds looking into the dugout, figuring how they want to play this. He's going to play behind him. Well, a step behind him. They want to let him, they want to let Reynolds get in position to field a, a hard shot down the line. Swing and a miss by Bruce on what looked like ball four. The Reds take advantage of the error by Garza and lead after a half inning, one nothing. in first place 13 games over 500 and his lineup presented by Meyer Scooter Jeanette just moved into the leadoff spot earlier this week Ryan Braun in the two hole Jonathan Lucroy now bats third Gomez went from leadoff to the cleanup spot Ramirez at third Chris Davis in left Reynolds Falou and Garza against seven and three Reds right hander Homer Bailey now Homer Bailey in his career the numbers aren't all that great against the Milwaukee Brewers four and seven but lately meaning last year after his first game the other three and then this year he's been very good against them in fact he's really getting his act together the more and deeper he gets into this 2014 season better rhythm better command of the fastball overall a lot better pitcher than well, who broke camp back in March. Well, you may remember Homer Bailey tweaked a groin muscle about a little more than halfway through spring training. And he talked about how it affected his conditioning more than anything else. And by the time the season started, he didn't feel like he had his legs underneath him, the strength in the legs. Well, look at those last four games. 4 0 record ERA right at three, 42 strikeouts against only seven walks. Jeanette at 285, three home runs and 15 runs batted in. It was a little more than three weeks ago when this team was going through some woes offensively as that one is lined in the left center softly, a base hit by Jeanette. When Ron Rennick, he really shifted around this lineup. 
I mean, Ryan Braun has been that number three hole hitter seemingly forever. Moved him up to two. Pretty good bit of hitting right there. You can see why Jeanette is in that leadoff spot. You make a little swing like that on a 2-1 pitch. You're thinking he's coming after me with a fastball. He got one. Not a bad location by Bailey. He just kind of took Jeanette did what Bailey was giving him. So here is Ryan Braun at 294, nine home runs, 33 runs battered in, coming back off being suspended through the second half of last year. He's batted in the two holes 17 of the last 18 games. And during the 18 games, he's been better than a 300 batter and knocked in 12 runs during the 18 games. Prior to this year, Ron had not batted anywhere in the starting lineup but third since September of 2010. Nothing in two. Now, there are a lot of good hitters. Chris talked about it earlier. There are a lot of good numbers from some of these Milwaukee Brewers hitters against Bailey, but, but quite honestly, most of them were piled up early on in Homer's career and really up until last year. And Braun hit with an 0-2 pitch, and Bailey did not want to do that. Right, you see where they wanted to come with it right inside there more up the ladder than in but that ball just sailed on Bailey wanted to make sure he didn't make a mistake out over the middle of the plate. Well that's a hitter getting away from it because you work very hard to get ahead of a guy like Ryan Braun. And then you fly open a little bit too early your arm lags behind the ball sails on you and you've got two on and nobody out. Oh, and by the way, you're facing arguably the hottest hitter in all of baseball right now in Jonathan Lucroy. An eight game hitting streak, which he's batted 412. Now you look at so many categories, offensive categories among National League players, and he is on the leaderboard in a pile of them. And a liner that will be a double play. Well, that's exactly what Homer Bailey needed right there an Adam ball and that's what he got a line shot right over the head of the second base umpire. Look out Doug Eddings and on the other end of that was Brandon Phillips to make the easy grab and then an easy flip to Cozart for a double play. All right two away one on and Carlos Gomez about it an all star for the first time last year. And he's picked up right where he left off. 310 hitter, 12 home runs, 37 batted in, has 18 doubles. And rather than keeping him at the top of the batting order where he's been the last couple of years, they've got him now in the cleanup spot. Liner by Kozart sounded like he broke his back. And that'll end the inning. One nothing Reds at the end of one.
I'm Jim Day right beside the Reds dugout. And the Reds hope that history holds up because they've had some pretty good success against this Brewers team over the past several years. It's part of our Elk and Elk storylines brought to you by Elk and Elk, serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1 800 Elk Ohio. Reds have won or tied the last seven season series versus Milwaukee as you look through the numbers including taking three out of four earlier this year at Great American Ballpark. That 578 win percentage is the third highest versus any National League team. So the Reds hope that success can carry right on into this series. Tom? Well, Jim, that's only one time. So of the last seven, the Reds have actually won six of the last seven season series. Only once did the Brewers manage a tie. And, you know, tonight starts... What will be the first of 15 games between these two teams the rest of this season? Devin Mesoraco down a strike. 15 more games. Now Devin, after starting the year on fire, has really cooled off. The Reds need that bat to come back around. 308 hitter. Nine home runs, 27 runs batted in. Hard hit ball at Aramis Ramirez. One out. Try to keep you up to date on what else is going on with both the Pirates and the Cardinals tonight. The Pirates are in Miami to take on the surprise Marlins. Three games over 500. And Miami just can game behind Washington in the National League East. The Pirates are taking on those Marlins. And the Cardinals are playing at home to the white hot Washington Nationals. They just won three out of four in San Francisco before losing the finale yesterday to Tim Hudson. A ball and a strike on Skip Schumacher. One and two. Now, what about the arsenal of Garza? Well, he's got two different fastballs, a four-seamer, two-seamer. They're both about the same velocity, right around 93. Throws a lot of sliders, a curveball, and a changeup. Of the home runs he's given up this year, seven home runs, five of those have come on the fastball. And he, so far tonight, has come right after the Reds hitters. I mean, really what we have here is a, a matchup of a couple of hitting teams that like to go up there swinging the bat, not exactly working the other team for walks. One out, none on. Reds in front, one nothing in the second inning. And Schumacher drops it foul off to the third base side. Still two and two on the Reds left field. Cozart waits in the on deck circle. If you're just joining us, the Reds got a one out single by Frazier, who took off for second base. Garza turned around. All he had to do was make a good throw to. To have it caught and tagged out, there's a ground ball to short. Falou on the run, and the throw is high, and the runner is safe. Second error of the game by Milwaukee, if indeed that is an error. As Garza's throw bounced in the dirt, allowing Frazier to go to third in that first inning, and Phillips knocked him in. A little ball that just goes off the bat towards shortstop, and Falou looks like he's going to make the play, just throws it high. The sweep tag not in time by Mark Reynolds. To lose a young man that they signed as a minor league free agent this year has been around a couple of different teams and they're just trying to give the night off to their everyday shortstop Gene Segura getting a little bit of a rest and Reds maybe can take advantage of it. Schumacher leads it first for Kozai and a little pop up easily handled by Falou.
So now Homer Bailey five hits in 24 and bounce. But Lou is only making his fourth career start at shortstop. Segura. Boy it seems like every time the Reds see Gene Segura he's banging the ball off the right field wall or down the left field line but he is just mired in a terrible slump. So as Chris mentioned they're just going to give him a breather tonight. I'm sure we'll see him against big Matt Latos tomorrow night. And the other part of that is that the Brewers got in they had an extra inning game a 13 inning affair with a rain delay in New York last night against the Mets. They didn't get in until about 3 a.m. Ramirez will throw out Bailey and that's all for the Reds and there a man left Cincinnati leading one nothing. Now, Father's Day, day after tomorrow. The MLB.com at bat app and a subscription to its premium features on his favorite smartphone or tablet. Perfect for Father's Day. For details, visit MLB.com. The Reds on defense presented by your four dealers. Schumacher once more out in left field. Regular group along the infield. Now that Joey Votto is back. Reds leading one nothing. Milwaukee comes to bat here in the last of the second inning. Aramis Ramirez coming off the disabled list during their just completed road trip. Hit a couple of home runs since coming off the DL including one last night. Against left hander Jonathan Nice. Hey, that niece has turned into a nice pitcher. What's the name of the town in Ohio where he's from. I can't remember. But I know he's a native Buckeye and he was involved in a 1 1 game last night with Kyle Loesch. Both of those guys on top of their game. And the Brewers finally won it. He's from Lima work. land. Lima Ohio. That's one of the great stops on the Reds caravan. No, it definitely is one of the biggest ones. Home of one of their most dedicated network radio stations, too. Yes. Yeah, it's just a great stop. W I N A, man, oh man. I've been on the, I've been on the radio up there with them for years and years. And that is a dyed in the wool Reds fan base. That is 11:50 a.m. on your dial. Now gets away from Mezzarocco. And a throw! In time! And immediately Garth Org, the first base coach, 
points to his manager, Ron Renneke, and says, well, we might want to take a look at that one. There you can see that hamstring still bothering Aramis Ramirez, just trying to get up the first baseline. Well, Brian Honora, is, it seems to be as about as interested in taking a look at the replay as anybody else. That's a pretty good pitch by Homer Bailey. Bottom just drops out of that splitter. And he said that he pulled his foot, but I think that Joey Votto had just the tip of his toe on that bag, although I don't know. Well, that's a former Reds manager, Jerry Naren, on the phone with their video replay. Manager taking a look at whether or not they'd like to have this one checked on via the new rules in Major League Baseball and instant replay. Looks like a good call. Votto has the tip of that toe on the bag, and Ron Renneke says, good enough. Strikeout for Homer Bailey. One gone here in the Milwaukee second inning. Chris Davis, the batter. Chris Davis at 258, 10 home runs and 27 runs batted in. Now Davis not one of those Brewers who's been around for a long time that maybe collected some of the numbers early in Homer Bailey's career. He was called to the major leagues for the first time and what a lift he gave this Brewers team. 56 games hit 11 home runs knocked in 27 runs. Well, he's got 10 home runs this year. He can really turn on a fastball. And that's why the last couple of pitches you see. Have been breaking balls down the dirt. He guesses. He likes to get that pitch up in the zone, and boy, he can hit it about as far as anybody. And you see the way he's turned his season around after a slow start. Well, he must have been the only guy on that team to have with a slow start, running off 20 wins in your first 27 games. Struck him out, and again, all speed got him. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Homer here in the second inning. You know that's what happens sometimes. You get a guy with a lot of talent like Chris Davis comes up out of the minor leagues and they kind of sneak up on you. And the first thing that happens in the major leagues is that they try to bury fastballs on you and see if you have a quick enough bat to be here. And he proved to everybody last year that's the case. So this year he's getting a little more of a diet of off-speed stuff. In fact, nothing but splitters in that at bat with Homer Bailey. So two down now for Mark Reynolds. A guy who can hit him as far as anybody that plays this game of baseball in either league. Always been one of those guys that's pretty much hit or miss. He runs into one. Bernie Blue. Bernie will be sliding down that slide out there in left field. But he does a lot of that. I mean, he's up there with some of the all time hit or miss guys Dave Kingman, Rob Deere. Pretty much, you know, cut out of the same cloth. I'm not suggesting that he's going to hit 500 home runs, but Reynolds has hit a lot of home runs, especially during his extended run with the Arizona Diamondbacks, his original club. One and two, the count. I'll tell you the difference we're seeing tonight from Homer Bailey from some other starts is he's throwing that splitter of his for strikes. Normally, that's a pitch that it, that starts as a strike and finishes as a ball. But it's a night where he looks like he's got pretty good control of it. Here it comes again. Two and two on Mark Reynolds. And a fastball missed outside at 98 miles per hour from Bailey. Now 
Homer taking an extra minute or two to gather himself before this 3 2 pitch on Mark Reynolds. And that's hit a ton of foul. Once more the payoff pitch Bailey to Reynolds a swing and a miss and Bailey fans aside in the second inning. Ramirez Davis and Reynolds all gone swinging. Writes that the Reds pitching staff has plenty of options to make the National League All-Star team. Who are the key Bengals that need to improve for the Bengals to improve? And Kevin Goheen writes about a charity boxing match that'll be taking place coming up in Cincinnati. It's brought to you by 1 800 Safe Auto Drive Safe Spend Less. Of course, Cincinnati has been one of the great boxing cities in America, producing multiple Olympic boxers. And a big reason for that, our old buddy Buddy LaRosa. You're right about that. And now John Burns involved very much in the boxing scene in Cincinnati. From CBTS. Building up some a new facility. They they say will take it all to the next level. Well, there have been so many great Olympic boxers that have come out of Cincinnati. Of course, the greatest of them all, Aaron Pryor. Boy. Was he something. All right, here we go. Top of the order for the Reds here in the third inning with a one nothing lead against Matt Garza and the Brewers. Opening game of this three game series, opening game of a six game road trip. Next stop, Pittsburgh after three days here. Hamilton brings a bunt with him. And they're two away in the inning. Or one away in the inning, I beg your pardon. Two times Hamilton's tried to bunt his way on. Well, they tried third base the first time. Good play by Aramis Ramirez got him. This time, he just got it down the line a little bit too much. I think Billy Hamilton wanted to get that ball more towards the pitcher so that Garza would either have to get off the mat and try to field it or the first baseman would. Then he'd have a foot race to the bag against Garza, which he would probably win. Hamilton at two at-bats has seen three pitches in this game. Frazier a fly ball to straightaway center field. And just like that, two are out. Well, Frazier hit a fastball his last time up for a solid base hit. That time he got a slider and he missed the sweet spot.
Mato flight out to Gomez in center. His only time up. Red's got a two out single by Brandon Phillips, plating Todd Frazier in the first inning. The game's only run. And pull to the right side. Boy, that was a quick inning right there for Matt Geiser. Five pitches to retire Hamilton, Frazier, and Votto. For Homer Bailey, he took care of the Brewers one, two, three on three strikeouts. And that is our Mazda pitch by pitch. He got Aramis Ramirez to chase a ball in the dirt. He was thrown out of first base. Chris Davis goes down on a splitter, then a fastball right by Mark Reynolds. So a one, two, three all strikeout inning for Davis, and he takes them out here in the third. Irving Falou, the shortstop, to lead things off. Bailey. Struck out the side in the second inning. It starts to Lou at ball one. Falou has played in 10 games, primarily as a defensive replacement. Only seven at bats. And he's hitless in seven at bats. Those were his numbers at AAA before being brought up to the big league club. One and one on Irving Falou. Young man that was raised in Puerto Rico, he ended up going to. Indian Indian Hills Community College in Iowa drafted a couple of times once by the Padres did not sign then by the Royals in 2003 21st round signed and a couple of teams later here he finds himself in the major leagues with the Brewers. And Bailey throwing a lot of all speed stuff to Falou after getting to one and one, and now he's falling behind three balls and a strike. Pitcher Garza to follow, and then back to the top of the order in Studer and Jeanette. Reds eight game behind these Milwaukee Brewers going into play tonight. Reds at three games under the Brewers at 13 games over. And it's pulled to Joey Votto. And three straight fastballs after falling behind three and one takes care of Falou. Well, a reminder coming up a little bit later on. Our Miller time moment brought to you by Miller Light. And so far, the Miller time moment is at throw by Matt Garza. 
in the first inning when he should have thrown out Todd Frazier who was in no man's land and just sort of flipped it from right almost like a shot put little throw and it, it bounced and got by the second baseman Frazier went all the way to third Brandon Phillips knocked him in Garza a one of 27 as a batter this year. Tapper goes like throw him out to away. Well, both of these ball clubs we mentioned early on that they're not the kind of teams that sit around and try to run the count up like the Dodgers did, for instance, the other night against Johnny Cueto. They are among the worst in the league as far as seeing the most number of pitches. So the Brewers are the most aggressive team out there, seeing only 3.6 pitches per. At bat or plate appearance, and then the Reds not too far behind right there. But you can hardly argue with the success the Brewers have had, especially in the win column. So, whether they see a lot of pitches or not, they're getting it done. And we show that sad. It's not to say that it's an opinion that you should see more pitches. There are teams that try to do that, they work to count more, other teams. Feel like they want to let their guys get out there and swing the bats. Well, you know, to follow that up, let me ask you as a guy pitching the major leagues. If you're facing a team that does one or the other, which one would you rather face? Well, <laughs> I want to face a team that's swinging the bats. And I think Greg Maddox was the same way. He always, his goal as a pitcher was to try to get the hitter out in three or fewer pitches. And you can't do that if they're up there watching. So here they turn the lineup over. Jeanette will make you throw a strike, and he's got Bailey three and zero. Oh. <laughs> Jeanette dropped one, a soft liner over the head of Cozart into left center field, leading off the Brewers first. Braun followed by getting hit with a pitch on an 0-2 count. And then Lukoy hit a missile right at Phillips. It turned into a double play. On a 3-1 pitch, Bailey will beat him to the bag, and that's all for the Brewers. They're gone in order. We played three in Milwaukee for the Reds on a one-nothing lead. Food group. Let's create great dishes together. Buy Toyota for over 30 Toyota offers. Visit buyatoyota.com. And by B Dubs. Spend $30 on a gift card for dads and grads. They'll give you a $5 bonus. Buffalo Wild Wings. 
Wings Beer Sports along the shores of Lake Michigan. I tell you what, you stick your toe in that water right now, Doctor. <laughs> you might be able to snap it off when you pull it out. That is some frigid water after the winter they had up here this year. The high look. today was only about 68. It felt great, yeah, though, it did. didn't it? I couldn't believe it. I, I thought it was almost like a like a fall, September, October college football Saturday here in Milwaukee. The temperatures the way it felt today. Brandon Phillips knocked in the game's only run with a two out single in the right field his first time up. Well the Reds in Fox Sports Ohio would love to send out a couple of birthday wishes from this past week. Arnold Woodruff up in Columbus 80 years old last Tuesday. Arnold belated happy birthday Henrietta Blue up in Dayton turned 92. That was on Wednesday. And then today Lenore Wilson of Belpre Ohio. 97 years young. Wow. Happy birthday, Lenore. And foul that one off his foot. Two balls and a strike. Well, Chris, you and I were talking the other day about Brandon Phillips as the second longest consecutive season of any second baseman in the history of baseball of playing 140 games or more. Second only to the Hall of Famer Nellie Fox. Well, you know, he came out of yesterday's ball game because after hurting and fielding a he hurt his finger, his throwing finger fielding a ball, and couldn't finish the ball game. But here he is back playing tonight. I mean, we've seen him out there with a broken foot or broken finger before, playing for weeks at a time. Jumps all over that pitch, but way out in front. Now here's the play we're talking about right there, and it turned into a double play, and a, or not a double play, a force play at first base. Yasiel Puig was able to outrun the. The back end of it. But he came out of the ballgame. He was pinch hit in his last at bat by, for, by Ryan Ludwig. But he's, he's back in the lineup today. And he's limping down there to first from where he found that ball off his front foot. Price and Jay Bell immediately wanting to know if he's okay. Jay Bruce struck out, ending the Reds' first inning. You can see Phillips really in some pain down there in that dugout. Paul aside, the head trainer, checking in on him. And that one laced into right center field. That'll be a base hit for Jay Bruce. Third hit for the Reds in the game against Garza. And Bruce at first with one out here in the fourth inning. Mazzarocco coming up. Looks like he got a change up that time that Garza's trying to fool with him. And he throws it on the outer part of the plate, but just elevates it a little bit too much. So Jay Bruce continues to do what he does a lot against Matt Garza, which is get base hits. He's the only player in this Reds lineup that has touched up Garza for more than one home run. He's got two of them from him. Mezzarocco hit the ball very hard right at Aramis Ramirez his first time up and looks at ball one this time. Cardinals in the fifth inning, a one nothing lead over the Nationals. That's Zimmerman on the mound in that one for Washington. Lance Lynn for the Redbirds. 
And the Pirates jumping all over the Marlins 6 2 that game in the fifth inning in Miami. Is a challenging Mezzarocco with a 1 0 fastball there, and it's fouled out of play. You know, Garza was one of those players that was drafted in that very prolific 2005 draft, where that first round is just really a list of who's who as far as the players that have made an impact in the major league. The first player drafted that year in that round was Justin Upton. Well, you also had Ryan Zimmerman, Ryan Braun. Troy Tulowitzki went in that draft. Jay Bruce, Andrew McCutcheon. And all the way down number 25 by the Minnesota Twins was Garza. Well, Garza has bounced around a lot. Minnesota to Tampa Bay. To the Cubs, traded to the Rangers, and then signing this past offseason with the Brewers as a free agent. Now he threw the first no hitter in Tampa Bay history. That was in July of 2010. Did it against the Detroit Tigers. In fact, he only faced 27 batters in that ball game. One batter that got on there, I think they raced with a double play ball. He was nearly perfect. Good eye there by Mesoraco. Three and two to count. Bruce a perfect seven out of seven in stolen base attempts so far this year. Not running on a three two pitch it's hit straight into the air behind the plate. And Lou Croy with room. Well it just goes to show you how much spin. A ball that goes right behind home plate like this has because at one time that ball was in foul territory and then it came right back over the screen. And one catcher retires the other. Two away for Schumacher. He reached on an error, a throwing error by Falou, the shortstop, his only time up and looks at a fastball strike one. One run, three hits for the Reds. No runs, one hit. Two errors for the Milwaukee Brewers. Four days in a row, the Reds face a season high eight game deficit. They haven't been more than eight games out of first place since going all the way back to 2011. That one pulled foul. Reds have won eight of their last 13, nine of their last 15. And now, with everybody healthy, you know, the game two days ago when they beat the Dodgers, it was the first time since the third week of April. When Votto and Bruce knocked in a run in the same game. And Jay went down with a, a knee surgery. By the time he was ready to come back, Votto went down to the disabled list. There's a slow roll of the short. And that'll retire the side. It hit a man left. Middle of the fourth. Reds one. Brewers nothing.
Only $12 when they take on the Toronto Blue Jays at Great American Ballpark. Got the fireworks on Friday night, giveaways and more the entire weekend. Call 513-381-REDS if you buy them today. Two, three, and four in the Brewers batting order against Homer Bailey. Red scored in the first inning on a single by Frazier. Went to third on a stolen base and a throwing error by Matt Garzan. Scored on a base hit by Brandon Phillips. Homer Bailey allowed a leadoff hit. We'll get Ryan Braun on the first pitch to begin the Milwaukee fourth. Well, Jim Day. Let's check in with you. Where are you, Jim? Dick? I am down here by the Reds dugout and uh, talking about Homer Bailey and Jeff Pico. They've done a lot of work with this mechanics. And obviously, you've noticed that he's gone back to his former windup. But Brian Price talked about something that they noticed on video that they thought Homer might have been tipping his pitches earlier on in this season. Now, normally, you hear about tipping your pitches after the fact, maybe from another team. They did not hear from another team, but it's something they noticed on video. And collectively, those three men right there are Pico, Price, and Homer. So let's go ahead and just change this right now. Now, it's probably something we can't notice. It's the subtlest of things, but there are guys in this business that make a living off of figuring out the minorest of details of tipping pitches. So whatever they did, it seems to be working. It's good stuff there, Jim Ding. Hey Jim, I've been meaning to ask you. Yes, sir. You know, since since you're now in the game with us, and we love having you as part of the regular in-game coverage. Oh, you're buttering me up for something. No, I, every time I look at Bernie Brew up there by Bernie's dugout, I can just picture Jim Day coming down that slot. Have you thought about it? Well, I'm not sure if there's a weight limit on the uh, slide. We'll have to look into that. Uh, however, uh, I, I would be game if Bernie would let me slide down that slide. If the Brewers would let me. I, I'm all for it. Well, I, I pictured one of two things. Uh, if either that, and if he can't get the green light for that, well, then you know where you go after that, don't you? Where's that? The sausages. I would love to race the in the sausage race sausage as well. Race. I'm in for both. If you can line it up, I know you got a lot of pull in this game. If you can line it up, I'm in. Jim, it used to be the only place I had any pull was when I just lived by myself with two dogs. Now I have no pull. <laughs> anyway. Which one would you rather see him do, Chris? The, the slide, if we got to get to work on it. Well, I'd rather see him on the slide okay. because we we would recognize him there, right? In a sausage race, you'd have to wear a sausage. Tapper to short. Two away. A homer settling in very nicely. Breaking balls early, fastballs late, and commanding the strike zone. Tonight's game, we're once again participating in the home run challenge. Every home run hit in this game raises $6,500 for prostate cancer research. And if you're able to make a pledge, please do so. Go online to homerunchallenge.org. You know, I think the sausage race more suited for you. You're a runner. A little speedy little runner from what I understand. Not really. No. No, not that speedy at all. I do like running. Out running the streets. Whenever you get a chance. Got a pound that pavement. Yeah. Oh, and one to count on Gonzalez. And now ball to strike. Which by the way. Now see, by the way, you know, you bring this up now, you gotta be careful because you know, one of my former partners. Got up during the game, went to the outfield, put on one of the sausage costumes, and ran in the race, and then came back to the booth to finish the game with me. And did he tell you he was going to do that? Yes. But I'm thinking if he did it, then why not have another partner? Well, he was probably an athlete. Well, I don't know if Mark Grace would tell you he's a good athlete or not. I'm not sure. Well, he had more hits than. We have more hits than anybody else in the 2000s in the decade of 
between 2000 and 2000. 1990s, I think. Is it 1990s? And doubles. Hits and doubles. Had to be the 90s. Brianne won the count on Gomez. And two out one. Second wall given up by Bailey. Well, you can now tweet your photo using hashtag Ohio Fan Photo, and perhaps we'll show it during an upcoming telecast. It's brought to you by AT&T. And now you got to keep an eye on Gomez. Now, Gomez has 11 of them. But Omer has really tightened it up as far as being able to control the running game. In years past, it was something he tried to do but really didn't didn't shut down the running game all that well. Last year he gave up 14 stolen bases, threw out only three. This year he's given up four. They have thrown out three. And he's also picked one off. Of course, you've got the trendsetter in this rotation and Johnny Cueto who shuts down a running game about as well as any right hander I've ever seen. So just by sitting along with him and watching him every fifth day, you've got to get better yourself. Of course, you know, Gomez has always been a guy who, who runs very well. He used to do a lot of swinging and missing. It's one of the reasons Minnesota, I'm not going to say gave up on him, but. They decided to go in a different direction when Denard Span was coming up. And Gomez, as there he takes off. And that ball is laced into left center field. And it is up against the wall, and this will tie the game. A two out walk comes back to bite Homer Bailey. A double by Aramis Ramirez. Maybe thinking he was going to get a fastball because you had a speedster on the base pass. And Ramirez just wallops this ball right on the sweet spot, base of the wall, and the ball kind of dies out there. And when you've got a speedster like Gomez out there, he comes roaring around third base. And I thought for a moment from up here he may have missed the bag, but we see that he got the inside corner and a tie ball game. Bailey had retired 10 straight before that walk to Gomez. And now he's trying to get out of this inning in a 1 1 game. Davis struck out his first time up. We've talked so many times whether he wore a, a Cub uniform and obviously these days a Brewers uniform. But you start looking inside some of those career numbers for Aramis Ramirez, and I tell you what, he's showing no signs of slowing down. When he's healthy enough to play, this is still a dangerous run producer. I he's knocked what, in over 1,300 career runs. That's what the Brewers are hoping and counting on that he stays healthy, that that elbow that has been giving him so much problem this year just continues to improve. Two and zero on Davis. Well, make no mistake about it. The ownership here in Milwaukee has said it. But they are all in this year. So if that means making a deal at the deadline, even to take on more salary, they will do it this year because they feel that with the start that they have and the foundation in this ball club that they have, that they are a championship caliber club. Question is, if you're thinking about how you can improve the Brewer team, the starters all look pretty good. You could always use more pitching. You could probably use another bat off the bench. Couldn't everybody? Mm -hmm. 
Three and one the count on Chris Davis. Go ahead run it second. And now full count. Aramis Ramirez with 1304 career runs batted in. That ties him with Enos Slaughter. He is one RBI behind the great Roberto Clemente. Wow. This guy has been knocking in runs for a long, long time. Three and two now on Davis. Bailey Walton through an off speed 3 2 pitch down around the ankle. Well, the two out walk uh, it has, you tell Bailey after allowing the double was really upset. Cruise it right along and retired 10 in a row and then walked Gomez. Who then scored on the double by Ramirez? Davis walks. And now he has to face Mark Reynolds with two on and two out. Well, they handled Mark Reynolds last time up, and it was breaking ball early. Had Reynolds looking for something off speed. Finally, when the count went three and two, he threw a fastball by him. He did not look like he wanted to throw a fastball to Chris Davis. I may imagine he feels a little better about this matchup. Not exactly knocking the cover off the ball on this year, batting under 210. But his average just jumped better than 40 points when he's hitting with runners in scoring position. And even with two outs and runners in scoring position. He's got a 2 0 count here. Boy, and Bailey needing a compass to find a strike zone now. Well, he might be pitching with an eye on the on deck circle. And you hate to do that to load the bases up because every major league hitter has got a chance to be dangerous. And you got Mark Davis, who has 13 home runs and 29 driven in. Or Irving Falou on deck, who's looking for his first hit this year. Fastball at 95, caught the outside corner. You know, this. This Brewer team is interesting because their run production comes from all up and down the lineup. I mean, it is very evenly placed. It's a deep lineup. But if you just fall asleep for just a, a moment or two, all of a sudden you're seeing a guy up there with 27, 28, 29 runs batted in, batting in the number seven spot. And one Bailey to Reynolds. Third walk of this inning in the fourth walk of the game for Homer Bailey. And they're loaded for Falou. Bailey has thrown 25 pitches in this inning. And just to give him a little break before he goes to work on Falou, Jeff Pico will come out for a word. I beg your pardon. Three walks. He hit a batter in the first inning. Now this is where as a pitching coach you're just trying to get him back on track and you know maybe he's got a mechanical checkpoint that he goes to in his delivery to make sure that he gets to a spot before he 
finishes his delivery of his windup. It might be as simple as keeping your shoulder in or, or your chin tucked down or your leg to a certain spot, whatever they've worked on. It's kind of a mental anchor for him. But here's a guy you got to come right after. I I remember he fell behind Falou the last time three and mm -hmm. And I imagine he, he Falou's up there going to take at least one strike. Mm -hmm. Now Falou wasn't exactly tearing it up in the minor leagues when they called him up. He was a 288 one home run I think eight knock in. The Reds have action in their bullpen. They have Logan Andrusik up and throwing. As all of a sudden Bailey's control has found him in a world of trouble. Bases loaded, one in, two out. The two outs, first two batters in the inning. Nothing to it against Braun and Lou Croy. And a walk to Gomez. He scored on a double by Ramirez. A walks to Davis and Reynolds. And now one and one on Falou. Well, when you're missing outside like that as a right-handed pitcher, your front shoulder's just flying open a little bit too soon. The way to crack it is stay over the rubber a little bit longer. And keep your head still. Straight up in the air. Hamilton, Kozart, Schumacher, Kozart to catch. The inning is over. So, through all that, just one run. And we're tied at one at the end of four. So hi, I'm Jim Day. Obviously, it is Friday the 13th. Now, I talked to a number of players today and found no one to be superstitious about Friday the 13th. However, I did find one guy that doesn't even like the mention of it. No, not at all. I try not to even think about that. I mean, I don't, I don't deal with stuff like that. I'm kind of afraid of stuff like that. Hearing people talk about the things that happen and stuff, so I try to keep my ears closed from that. Scared of it? Scared in what way? What? Just, just the way it is. I mean, it's, it's scary. I mean, people talking about how, how all bad things happen. You never get nothing good out of Friday the 13th. So I try to stay away from it as much as I can. Well, kudos to Billy Hamilton for having the guts to admit it. But Tom and Chris, there's also a full moon on this date. It mm. is very rare. The next time it will happen, August 13th, 2049. Come on. I'm not kidding. That's the next time there's going to be a full moon on a Friday the 13th. Indeed. Did you get that out of the Farmer's Almanac? I got. I read it somewhere. <laughs> no, somewhere. I read it. I read it on the internet. Of course, you believe everything on the internet. No, it's been widely publicized. 2049.
Hmm. I thought maybe you figured that out, Jim Day. Uh, no, they, <laughs> when they, uh, they, I was told math was not part of this job. Well, then so, you fit in perfectly. Exactly. You <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. Perfect. <laughs> You're hired. A uh, 1 1 game is reset to begin the fifth. There's an interesting nugget for you. Of course, you could have found that in the Farmer's Almanac. Well, this that is, is also the, the publication that is a must buy every year. The I'm Farmer's not sure Almanac. If Jim mentioned it, but this is the only Friday the 13th of 2014. So, uh, did you read that on the internet as well? I heard on the radio. And of course, you can believe everything you hear on the radio. <laughs> Ozark popped up on the first and only pitch of his first at bat to the shortstop Falu. Fastball off the inside corner at 93. Just missed. Two and two. And scored in the very first inning thanks to a key error by Garza. And now three balls, two strikes. Those are trying to get aboard and give his pitcher Bailey a chance to move him over with a bunt before we roll back over to the top of the Reds batting order. Deep in the hole it's short Falou will let it fly and Kozai beat it out. So an infield hit for Zach Kozai and Bailey will have that chance. Uh, hanging right in there is Zach Cozart after he got down in the count. And he took a couple of very close pitches from Garza. Garza probably feels like he had him struck out a couple of times. Did not get the call. Cozart ends up with an infield hit. And the Reds now with a chance to move a runner into scoring position and maybe get that one run back they gave up in the bottom of the fourth. Well, we've already seen a night where Ramirez is still not moving anywhere close to 100%. Not sure he would have had that ball anyway, but it would have been a lot closer than it wound up being. And you can't roll it out there any better than that. And oh. look at Garza! Holy mackerel! I mean, that ball was a good 20 feet over Scooter Jeanette's head and went in the air all the way into the stands about 10 rows. I mean, he doesn't step. Watch where he he just kind of turns his body and throws flat-footed. He's got all day to be able to pick the ball up, stay low. He did a couple of things wrong right there. If you're learning how to field as a pitcher at home, you field the ball and you stay low and you crow hop and you throw a nice firm throw, but not overdo it the first base, or else you'll air mail it into the stands and. Maybe Billy Hamilton instead of bunting it either to first or third should bunt it right back to Garza. It's a good idea. And then he can just sort of lollygag around like he's done twice already today and guys will just be sprinting around the bases. Breaking ball strike one to Hamilton. Well it's one thing to get him on. We'll see now if the Reds can get him in. Well, when you turn the lineup over that's the whole idea of placing guys where you think. They can put the ball in play. Good opportunity here for the Reds. And Hamilton, a fly ball in the center. Gomez has a good arm. Here comes Cozart, and he stops. He started, came maybe about a third of the way down the line, and slammed on the brakes. One out the inning. Well, with nobody out. I think the Reds are a little more reluctant to take that chance right here. Gomez, as you said, has an excellent arm. And he takes pride in his defense, throwing runners out part of that. 
Gomez has five assists this year from the outfield second only to the injured Arizona center fielder A.J. Pollock. It's a huge at bat for the Reds in this game right here and right now for Frazier. Garza opened the door with a throwing error. Infield in. Frazier leads the Reds with 34 runs batted in. He is singled into center field, scored their only run, and now ahead to count 2 0. But Frazier doesn't seem to be chasing that pitch down and away anywhere near with the frequency he did even earlier this season. He's just like spitting on it, not even interested at all. And that's. He's putting the pressure on Garza here. And that one pushed through in the right field a base hit. They're going to hold Bailey. Scoring is Kozar. So he didn't get a lot of it, but he got plenty enough of it. And Frazier has given the Reds a two to one lead. Well, a good job by Todd Frazier. They missed twice outside. They wanted to come in, and he just keeps his hands going and makes sure he gets a fat part of the bat on him. Right now, Vado. Reds are thinking about a big inning now. They have him on the corners, only one out in the heart of the order coming up. Lotto is fly to center and then bounced out to the second baseman, Jeanette. Foul tipped, strike one. And that one laced into right field, a base hit. Scoring is Bailey. First to third goes Frazier. Fado delivers a run scoring single, and it's three to one Cincinnati. A clutch base hit by Fado. Well, a breaking ball that he is just all over. Garza elevating that, and Joey Fado doing. But really, he's begun to do since he came back off the disabled list. He said when he came off that list, he wouldn't want to give anybody the percentage of how much he was healthy. You know, 90% healthy his leg or 100% healthy. He just said he was going to come back and play good baseball. And that was a big hit there for him now. And now you're still thinking. About adding on and adding on. First to third after that single by Votto. Frazier on to third. Clean up hitter Phillips already with a run batted in. That came in the first inning. Will bat with one out. Well, Brandon shot the ball to right set right field the first time up for a base hit. He's got that whole right side of the infield wide open right here. With Reynolds holding the runner on. And you wonder if his finger is bothering him to swing the bat. If it might be a little bit easier on him if he uses this spot over here. You do an edge a sketch on that thing over there. <laughs> These will work. <laughs> One and one to Phillips. <laughs> on 
Runners at first and third, one out, one and one to Brandon. Runner takes off for second, and it's in the air, shallow right center, and caught. Tagging and coming in to score is Frazier, and the Reds have a four to one lead. Frazier all the way was standing on top of that bag. Where he was standing, it made no difference if it fell in. And he recognized it right away. Well, he realized when that ball came off the bat, if Braun's going to catch it, he's on the run anyway. If Davis catches it, it might be a different story. But Steve Smith is telling him, hey, you get back on the bag right there, and you're tagging up no matter what. With one out, they're going to take that chance. The runner at first stays there, Votto. Jay Bruce, one of two, singled his last time up. A three run fifth after the Brewers had tied the game in the bottom of the fourth. And it all started with the most basic play a sacrifice bunt to the pitcher. And Garza, as you so aptly pointed out, Chris Welsh, for the second time in the game, rather than the fundamentals of just setting your feet and making a good throw. Stuff you've been teaching your guys since they were little. Stuff we're trying to teach our guys while they're little. And Garza didn't do it. And both times the Reds have scored runs. I can show you how it can change the course of a ball game. One little play like that. And now Bruce shoots one into left center field. That is going to fall. A base hit it against between Davis and Gomez. And scoring all the way is Votto. A four-run fifth inning. Boy, the Brewers for a team at 13 games over 500 are having all kinds of issues in the field here tonight. Now that won't be charged with an error. But that should have been a play that stopped the runner at third. Well, that was the whole key right there. Bruce gets it in left center field gap. Davis is a good athlete. No errors on the yield. Carlos Gomez, a very good athlete. That ought to be an error, but who cares if it is or not? He gets a run in as Joey Votto scores all the way from first base. And the runs have done some serious damage here with a four spot. Now Mezzarocco, the eighth man to bat. Four have scored in this fifth inning. Boy, don't you think that Matt Garz is standing on the mound thinking, man, what did I start? Well, they gave an error to one of the two outfielders. I'm not sure which one. Probably Chris Davis. He was the one that bobbled it. Straight up in the air for Mezzarocco. Hold your breath here. Gomez will get it. That'll end the inning. So Garza will hang his head. As he walks off the mound, his throwing air started a four-run Reds fifth.
a sweepstakes on board the Fan Express. Enter today's keyword rough, R-O-U-G-H, at FoxSportsOhio.com. Stay tuned every day for a new keyword and a new chance to win. Well, they did end up giving Chris Davis, the left fielder, an error on that ball that Jay Bruce hit. So, for those of you wondering, that means no RBI on the double by Jay Bruce. Matt Garzin hangs his head, and you can understand why. He made a terrible defensive play in the first inning when Todd Frazier, while Garza was still in the stretch, took off for second. He turned around and threw the ball in the center field. Really didn't even throw it. It's almost like he rolled it. And then on the bunt attempt by Bailey, I mean, just like shot out of a cannon thrown into the stands. And the Reds take advantage by scoring four. So give the Reds credit for taking advantage of the misused defense. Well, sometimes you do it yourself. Sometimes you get some help. And that time, that little flip by Garza goes to center field. Todd Frazier eventually comes around to score in that inning. And that one is the off. Man, you don't see balls going into the stands that much. Those are. And the second time we'll throw out Garza. And when's the last time you've seen a pitcher throw the ball into the stands on a fly? Been a while. You've got to almost try to do that. Of course, I'm sure there are some in Chicago where Garza spent most of last year that aren't feeling all that badly right now. Because you may remember earlier this year when there was a lot of talk about Jeff Samarjan, a free agent at the end of the year. He's a Cubs ace. And I don't know why anybody thought to ask Matt Garza his opinion on Jeff Samarja and whether or not he should stay with the Cubs. And, you know, he came out and made those comments like, I'd get out of there if I were him. You know, I had a bunch of games behind me that got away playing there last year. And there were some people with the Cubs that were really, really upset about those comments made by Garza. Now Scooter Jeanette went off the game with a single and then got doubled off at second base on a line drive by Luke Roy. He bounced out to end the third to Joey Votto. Bailey now given a four run lead and gone swinging Jeanette. Again, we remind you the Blue Jays coming to town June the 20th, 21st, 22nd. And if you buy them right now, only $12. Of course, on Friday night, the big fireworks spectacular presented by Jeff Weiler Automotive Family. Log on to Reds.com slash tickets or call 513-381-REDS. <laughs> 97 mile per hour fastball by Bailey. A strike one to Ryan Braun. You're looking very dapper today with that new uh, tight cut for the summertime. <laughs> looking good. One and two on Braun. Gone swinging, and that's all for the Brewers in a 1 2 3 fifth. 5 1 Reds, we go to the six.
Brought to you by Ray St. Clair Roofing. First look at the lineups, features, interviews, and so much more. It's Reds Live, the pregame edition. Tomorrow, the much-anticipated 2014 debut of Matt Latos. There's not a team in the league that wouldn't want to welcome that big righty into the rotation. And the way it sets up, it's like making a midseason trade, as this guy can be an ace of your staff. Cueto and him, 1-1-A. One and one A. And a programming note, tomorrow's game is on the Big Fox. Check your local listing, 7 o'clock Cincinnati time. And as a sidebar to that, Tony Singrani, his status is still up in the air. Latos is taking his spot in the rotation. Talking to Brian Price before today's game, they say they have a big decision to make, and the decision is to either put Tony Singrani in the bullpen as a long relief man, which the Reds simply don't have right now, or send him to Louisville to work out the kinks as far as a starter goes. And he says that he and Walt Jockety will make that decision. Obviously, they have to do it tonight because they have to make a move to get Latos on the roster. So stay tuned for that one. Hmm. Now, that would be an interesting conversation. Schumacher taps out to first to begin the inning. You know, Chris, you were a guy that pitched in the major leagues for a long, long time. And, and I'm not suggesting for a second that you know you're making the decision here we know you're not but knowing what it's like to be a starting pitcher in the major leagues Singrani does have experience as we know going back to his days in college where he was a closer when the Reds drafted him so and he also spent a little time in the bullpen you may remember last year ultimately what might be better for Singrani or at least what are the pros and cons well the, the pros are that if you send him to the minor leagues, you know, he's trying to work on a new pitch. He's trying to get that breaking ball to a point where he's comfortable using it. And for him, because of his arm angle, it's not an easy thing to learn. He's never learned to curve ball. He's had to learn kind of a hybrid type slider is the way that Brian Price describes it. And, and it's it's kind of like the, the, the pitch that Madison Bumgarner threw a lot when he faced the Reds. Kind of a, a low angle, big breaking slider. And it's going to take some work. It's hard to learn that at the major league level and maybe going down the minor leagues would give him an edge to do that. On the other hand, you know, do you need a long man with this starting rotation? There aren't too many times when you see the, the starter knocked out in the third or fourth or fifth inning. And especially when you have a 12 man pitching staff. Now teams used to have long men when they had 10 guys on the pitching staff. But you don't have that anymore. So. Uh, and that long man was also sometimes a swing starter where he would be the fifth starter in a format rotation. So those are the things that are going to consider. But the thing we haven't talked about is there might be a reliever down in that bullpen that is hurting a little bit that we don't know about that they're covering for that they haven't pitched a lot of. And maybe they've got a barking arm down there that needs a trip to the DL. If that's the case, that's where that's where they would make that move. But whatever happens to Tony Singrani, you know, you he shouldn't take it personally. It's a, it's a it's a business up here. They're trying to make the team the best they can. They're trying to get him because believe me, he fits into the long term plans of this ball club in a big way. And there's ball four to Kozak. So Garza walks in number eight hitter with one away here in the sixth inning. And now he'll face Bailey. We know what happened the last time Bailey came up with Cozart on the first. The four errors tonight tie a season high for the Brewers. The other time they committed four errors in a game, they won the game on April the 18th in Pittsburgh. It's interesting, they have owned the Pirates so far this year. They've already played them, as Chris pointed out earlier, 13 times. We're going to let the first baseman handle this one. <laughs> I wasn't sure he was going to be able to get out of the way of that ball. <laughs> he acted like that ball was a live tarantula coming at him. Maybe he just got the yips. 
Happens to everybody every now and again. But you know, to finish the thought, it goes to show you sometimes, Chris, about you know run differential. You know, we talk about that from time to time. Okay, the that, Brewers are 10 and three this year against the Pirates. They have been outscored by the Pirates. Yeah, I, I saw that same thing, Tom. But I think that can be explained with two games. Of yes, the, of that's the only right. three that the Pirates have won, two of those were major blowouts in favor of the Pirates. Yep. But they're 10 and three against the Pirates, and that's one reason, of course, why their record is so good overall. But even with those numbers, the way they are, if you look at kind of everything else, all the peripheral numbers that surround, I mean, you know, we look at the numbers. I'm not sure we look at them as deeply as some people, but uh, it's almost, they're almost shouting to me like that this Brewers team is about ready to have a correction at some point. I'm not saying they're going to go through a 10 game losing streak, but they won a lot of close ball games. They won a lot of extra inning ball games. Now they're six and three in extra inning games. They're twelve and seven in one run games. So it's a long season. That's why you continue to pound away if you're the Reds. If you take advantage of every opening that you get. And they've taken advantage tonight. That's one thing you have to hand this offense a little bit of credit. Billingham. It wasn't only the errors in that inning. It was also errors and some clutch hitting. Fly balls. Sacrifice fly to get a run in. They put the ball in play when they needed to. Yep. Hamilton a pop up. He's had two bunts and two pop ups tonight. 0 for 4. And that'll end the inning. We're on our way to the bottom of the six. For the Reds lead it. 5 to 1. Gathered in Minnesota as Derek Jeter takes the field in his last All Star game. Promises to be an unforgettable night. Special coverage begins at 4 30 on Fox Sports 1, followed by the 2014 All Star game at 7 30 Eastern on Fox Sports. Homer Bailey with a five to one lead. Homer's only allowed two hits. First batter of the game had a single. That was Jeanette. And then Homer retired ten batters in a row after he hit the second batter of the game, Ryan Braun. But with two away in the fourth, Bailey walked Carlos Gomez, who scored the only Milwaukee run on a double by Aramis Ramirez. Homer had to. 
Avoid further trouble. Kozar deep in the hole. Plants runs and second. So the hitting streak for Lou Croy advances to nine straight games. Boy, that was a strong throw by Zach Kozar, too. He makes a great play right here. And he knows that Luke Croy runs very well for a catcher. He's a lot like Devin Mezzarocco. He'll get those kind of hits that some other catchers won't. So now Gomez, who has lined to short, walked and scored a run. You know, Gomez looks to me this time to be just a hair closer to home plate than he was his first couple of times up. Did a line drive his first time, walked last time. Now, I still think he's looking for something to pull. And the way you tell that is that if you look at his left foot, he starts open, but when he sets that foot down, he never really gets it back to square. He ends up going a little bit towards the third baseline. So he'll kind of angle that foot this way when he takes a stride. Jam shot roller. And did they turn it? Yes, they did. Brandon Phillips on the feed from Cozart in the stretch by Votto and a rare double play ground ball off the bat of the speedy Carlos Gomez. What well, is Reds defense is air tight man. I mean this ball really isn't hit all that hard but what happens is is that Gomez swings so hard that he almost falls down in the batter's box half the time and he takes him a long time to get out of the box and down the line and that enables the Reds to turn a dandy double play. Look at that. Momentum. He's got to turn his body completely around. So Reds have a chance for another three batter inning. Reds are still the number one ranked defensive team in all of Major League Baseball. They've only committed 27 errors, and it's not because they can't get the balls. The next fewest errors by any team, the Cardinals have 34. The Reds have only given up 13 unearned runs this entire year. Two and two on Aramis Ramirez, and he's gone swinging on a high fastball at 96 miles per hour from Bailey. Bailey probably has another inning in him. 92 pitch mark, a five to one lead.
photo. Tonight's fan photo of the game brought to you by ATT. Look at that. Brandon Phillips sneaking up on a couple of Reds fans just before the game. Thank you, Mike. And now for tonight's lows never stop improving. You know, we're talking about some Reds that could be ticketed for the All-Star game at Target Field in Minneapolis. What about Todd Frazier? Well, he's certainly deserving. There's no doubt about that. Whether he gets the votes or whether he gets a choice or not is really beyond his control. But he is doing his part of it, that's for sure. Leads third baseman in home runs, extra base hits, slugging percentage, stolen bases. Add one to that tonight. And up there in every good category there is. And he's also playing gold glove caliber third base. Now early in the year you had the big long hitting streak by Nolan Arenado with the Colorado Rockies. And he's having a very good year. In the latest balloting that was announced, David Wright leapfrog Arenado in the fan balloting. That's to be expected. But the guy, ironically, that that is probably right there with Frazier neck and neck, if you really dive inside some of the numbers, is a young man who used to be the third baseman for these Milwaukee Brewers now down in Miami. McGee. Remember him? Casey McGee hitting 306 right now. I mean, he had one monster year for these Brewers. Then got hurt, and then could never get it back together again. They just sort of let him go. Well, look at it this way: if David Wright gets the vote, you also have to deal with Matt Carpenter of the St. Louis Cardinals for vote get. Well, as the third baseman, yeah. From a big fan base. Where so much of that is now online. You know, it used to be, you know, you'd look to see what ball club is going to have all those people come pouring into the ballpark, and that's still a big part of it. You know, the Rockies are drawing really well. We know about St. Louis and how well they draw. The Mets are really not drawing much. No, but David Wright is a seems like a perennial all-star sure. that he'll get votes around the country, and just because you recognize that name. Frazier like Phillips earlier fouling that ball off his front foot and taking an extra minute or two to get back in the box. Well, if it comes down to managerial choice you'd think that Matt Carpenter if he was not voted in would probably have the nod. Boy. Well, coming off the bag to Catch the air and throw by Falou is Reynolds. Tell you what, if Casey McGee gets there, it will be a road well traveled. Because after those couple of really good years, one exceptional year here in Milwaukee, went to the Pirates in 2011, the Yankees in 2012, wound up in Japan last year before he came back. And got a shot with the Marlins. If I'm not mistaken, McGee is, is one of the leading hitters in, in the National League with runners in scoring position well, this year. He's got 38 runs batted in. That's most of all third basemen. But he only has one home run. Matt Carpenter, the third baseman from the Cardinals, sports the highest on base percentage. As you would expect of any third baseman. Frazier leads in home runs. Pedro Alvarez a couple behind him. But he's only batting 238. So there are a lot of good third basemen like there usually are. But Todd is taking care of business. Frazier a couple of hits, a couple of runs scored, stolen base, and RBI tonight. Votto one for three, knocked in a run with a single in the right field in that four run fifth against Garza, who's still out there here in the seventh. Votto 
Moore got the head out on that one. He pulled the ball down the right field line, and I wonder if that is part of what Joey was referring to when he says you're going to see a little different Joey Votto coming back with a healthy leg, a little better foundation, and he might be turning on the ball a little bit more. Right behind the bag is where they had him played. Well, he throws out Votto. Sunday's family days at Great American Ballpark. Every Sunday home game, take advantage of the Reach Magazine family deal. Now, look, you can't beat this. When one member of the family goes and buys a full price ticket, you then get the option to buy three additional tickets at half price. And every Sunday home game, there's a giveaway. So call 513-381-RED-S or log on to reds.com slash family. Two away from Brandon. Strike one. Garza trying to get him through seven. His spot Two up fourth in the bottom of the inning. That was his 97th pitch of the night. Good crowd here tonight, really good crowd. Although, you know, most of the time when the Reds come rolling in here on a weekend over the last number of years, Chris, his place is jam packed. Not quite that tonight. I'm not sure you could pick a more beautiful weather night. Very cool, no humidity. Perfect. And the panels are open out there in the outfield, although the roof is closed. You see that full moon rising right over left center field. Jim Day telling us there won't be another Friday the 13th full moon until the year of our Lord 2000. And what was it Jim Day 49? Indeed 2049 and another eerie thing. On Friday the 13th, we are staying in a notoriously legendary haunted hotel. You had to bring it up. You had to do it. You just had to do it. One hundred first pitch of the game. Two a two on Brandon. Two and two on Brandon Phillips. Two down, nobody on. Reds hitting here in the seventh inning with a 5 1 lead. Good at bat here by Brandon. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming up. Jay Bruce hoping for a chance on deck. Or is it trying to finish him off here in the seventh? Three and two. Or 
Bruins have only played these division leaders four times this year. They beat them three of four in Cincinnati. That's when the Brewers came rolling in with the best record in all of baseball. They have basically been a 500 team ever since. And here in the opener of this series tonight, Reds with a 4 1 4 run lead. Jeanette will throw out Phillips. They stand and stretch in Milwaukee. Reds five, Brewers one. It, Chris. A homer Bailey not only bringing the energy but bringing the gas tonight up to 97 miles an hour six innings of three hit one earned run baseball and six strikeouts overall including three in a row that he got in the, the second inning he struck out two in the fifth and one in the sixth. Chris Davis to lead things off. Bailey with 94 pitches in the game. He's only allowed three hits. Struck out six. Walked three, all of them in one inning. And that ball is hammered to right field. Goodbye. Makes it a 5-2 game as Davis homers for the well, 11th time. Might, that is a might impressive. This swing. He knows he's being pitched away by Homer Bailey all night long. And he just waits and waits and cranks. Off the facade to the second level of seats in right field. That is mighty impressive. Well, he had a long opposite field home run the other night in Pittsburgh. Guy's got some serious thunder in that bat. Strike one to Reynolds. Well, that's where those add on runs that Reds put up there in the fourth inning are so important. You give up a solo shot like that to lead the inning off. It's almost a rally killer when you do that. Swing and a miss, one and two on Reynolds. And 
95 just off the inside corner on his 99th pitch of the night. So two and two on Reynolds. Reds lead is three. That's living right. I, I don't know. I, I'm tempted to give him the benefit of the doubt right here that he's shooting up all that way. Look at that. Look at that swing and look at his follow through. I think he saw that right side of the infield open up a little bit and he says I'm going to take my shot going right there after all the way Bailey's pitching me away. I'm not doing anything trying to pull the ball. There you get. You get to this time of the ball game too. You know Bailey around 100 pitches. You've got a healthy bullpen down there. Sam McCure is a guy warming up right now. But you sure would like to see Bailey get through this seventh inning. Well, you brought in Broxton. You may remember two nights ago, behind Johnny Cueto, you brought him into the game in the seventh inning, and Broxton went through the eighth. And Bailey in a non say or rather Chapman in a non save situation came in and finished that game off and then Alfredo went eight innings yesterday with Chapman working a ninth to nail it down. Now Bailey needs to get down to business a home run and a single. And now Falou trying to lay down a bunt for a base hit, strike one. Logan Schaefer is standing in the on deck circle. That is Garza spot due up next. Visit to the mound by Mezzarocco. I'm sure they're talking about Logan Schaefer, who bats for Garza. Garza walked just one batter. He only struck out one batter. Okay, they're saying that only one run is earned, and I'm having a hard time understanding that. If you're giving Frazier a stolen base in the first inning, well, they gave it a caught stealing. I beg your pardon. So only one of the five runs is earned. Tell you, I have a really hard time, Chris. I don't know if you agree or not. I mean, we, we all agree on the premise that the out should have been recorded at second base. Okay. But I have a very hard time understanding how you can score that a caught steal. Say somebody else threw that ball. Say the catcher threw the ball down to second base. Yeah, they did. The only time you see, well, it doesn't matter. If a ball is thrown to a bat, as there's a base hit in the left, so forget about that. There's two on now. They got the tying run coming to the plate. And they turn that lineup over. And behind the leadoff hitter Scooter Jeanette, you've got some thunder in Ryan Braun, Luke Croy, Carlos Gomez, and Ramirez. And it will not be Homer Bailey facing any of them. Nope. Bailey gives up a home run, a hit, a line out, and a hit.
after the Reds had given him a five to one lead. He will lead five to two leaving with two on and one out. This will be our skyline chili call to the bullpen as LaCure will come on for the Reds. with Minnesota taking on the Tigers. That's on Fox Sports 1. Then Baseball Night in America on Fox. The Reds and the Brewers. Our MLB doubleheader begins tomorrow at 4 Eastern on Fox Sports 1. Continuing tomorrow night, 7 Eastern on Fox. Top of the order, Jeanette coming up. Homer Bailey out of the game after six and a third inning. Six hits, two runs. And both runs are earned runs against Bailey tonight so far. He leaves with two on, one out. And Sam LeCure comes on from the bullpen. Yeah, a right-hander to face a left-handed hitting Scooter Jeanette. Now, Sam this year is holding left-handers to a lower batting average. 194 versus 250 and right-handers. LeCure, for the first time all year long, has been a little wobbly here of late. He has given up some hard, hard hit balls. Hitting in two thirds against the Dodgers a couple of days ago. Two hits, a walk, a run. You may remember the game he came in and was bent over at the waist after allowing three rockets. Of course, in a third of an inning against Philadelphia, he gave up three hits and four runs on the last home stand. Cure has been great all year long until lately. 2 0. Now, the one thing we have not seen out of Sam, I'm not sure if all year long, is a fastball up around 90 miles an hour. His fastball's hovered at 87 to 88. But he's been able to get outs for the most part with that breaking ball of his. Now he's down 2 0, and Judette will make it throw a strike here. In right field. They'll wave around the runner. And all of a sudden, it is a two run game. Now well, he goes 2 0 and throws a fastball, and Jeanette is waiting for it. Doesn't kill the ball. He gets it on the end of the bat, actually, but. Still finds it room out in right field to drive a run in. So the tie run on first base, and that's the one the Reds are most concerned about right here.
Ryan Braun in his career one for 11 against Sam LeCure. Walter Chapman is already in the bullpen starting to go through some various exercises. No sign of Jonathan Broxton getting up yet. Strike one. It's pretty evident that this eighth inning, seventh inning, I beg your pardon, belongs to Sam LeCure. And also pretty evident that Brian Braun really wanted nothing to do with that breaking ball that. Sam McCure can drop in on him. He looks like he was up there hunting a fastball, got one on the first pitch, and was ready to swing the bat. Runner takes off for second. Throw there. Safe. Well, that is aggressive baseball there by the manager. Rod Renneke getting that tying run in the scoring position. And Jeanette only has, that is his fourth stolen base. But you know what they say about stolen bases? Not how many, it's when you have your stolen bases. That's clutch. So now a base hit could tie the game. Nothing at two on Braun. I mean, they say that a base hit would more than likely tie the game because the way the Reds are playing defense, they're not playing much, paying much attention at all to Jeanette. You see the shortstop Kozar way over here, the second baseman here. Jeanette's going to be able to come off the bag a long way and get a good lead. When this inning began, the Reds had a five to one lead. Davis homer to right. Reynolds single to right after a line out, a single by the pinch hitter Schaefer. That was all from Bailey. LaCure allows a run scoring single to Jeanette, who steals second. And now with one out, a ball of two strikes to Ryan Braun. Struck him out swinging. Uh, finally dropped the curveball on him. He figured it was coming out one way or another during this at bat. Our flamethrower strikeout brought to you by Cholula Hot Sauce. Big overhand curveball. Serving Sam well on that one. Well, I mean, you're in the middle of the lineup right now for the Brewers. No matter whom you face in this spot, it's going to be a very good hitter. You have a base open. You have Lou Croy, who is hitting 336, and you have Gomez in the on deck circle hitting 310. And they are both identical, two for seven lifetime against Sam LeCure. Pitch on the way. Strike one. So, really, what you do here, I think, is what the Reds are doing is that you let Sam pitch to LeCroy. But you don't necessarily go right after. If you walk him, then you're signaling to the next guy that he's got to come after you with strikes. The cure's been around long enough to, to know where to miss. Luke Roy has been their main man in these situations all year long. The 0 1 pitch. A ball to strike. Luke Roy this year batting with runners in scoring position and two out. He's batting 423. And a lot of his base hits are balls that are driven up the middle of the field. Saw Brandon Phillips right where he's standing, playing a lot closer to the second base bag. Caught the line drive. Double play off the bat of Luke Roy in the first inning.
You know, if you're wondering about numbers in these situations and how much stock you put in them, that depends on the individual. But Luke Roy is batting over 200 points higher than Gomez with runners in scoring position and two outs. Tapper going to be a tough play. Frazier throws, and he beat it out infield in. And it's a one-run game. That's just tough luck. Well, Sam makes a pitcher's pitch right there. Luke Coy barely, barely even hits that ball. And he hits it in the perfect spot. An infield hit drives a run in. Nothing you can do about it. So now the tying run 90 feet away. Five one Reds has become five four Reds. Tying run at third, lead run at first. Gomez a batter. Got away with one right there. That ball just ran all the way across the plate, and Gomez looking to pull something just could not wait back long enough. No and one to Gomez. Reds are trying to preserve this lead and give Broxton and Chapman a chance with a one run lead to nail it down. At the very minimum. Well, they've got to get through the seventh. Down the left field line and out of play. So Gomez talking to his back. for the second time up in the Reds bullpen. Well, this is all about Sam LeCure right here and right now. Ahead of Gomez at nothing and two. They sit down the line. Tying run scores. They're going to hold the runner in third, and it's a 5-5 game. LeCure has given up three base hits. Not a bad pitch again. Down on the outer part of the plate, but you saw the kind of swings that Carlos Gomez had, but were pulling foul earlier in the at bat. Good plate coverage was feeling good against the cure. And with a four spot, Sam will be heading into the showers. Reds five, Brewers five.
fifth inning. It was a five to one Reds lead, and now we are tied at five. And we talked about this Brewer team. Come from behind, win 17, wins in their last at bat 10. Wins when trailing after eight innings, tied for the most in baseball. And they have rallied against Bailey and LaCure to tie the game. And now in search of the final out in this inning is right-hander Logan Andrusik. Yeah, the third right-hander in this inning for the Reds, started by Bailey, gave up that home run to Chris Davis, and all the other runs that he left out there were gassed in. Andrusik, 21 games now. And a go-ahead run of third, and another on second. So much for that solo shot by Chris Davis as being a rally killer. Go ahead, run at third. Runners at second and third after the RBI double by Gomez. And ball one to Aramis Ramirez. The enemy began with a home run by Davis, then a single by Reynolds. One out later, a single by the pinch hitter Schaefer. That was all for Bailey. Rather than the left hander Manny Parra against a left handed batting scooter Jeanette, Sam LeCure came in, allowed an RBI single to Jeanette, struck out Braun, but then allowed run producing hits, an infield single by Lou Croy. And on a no two pitch, a double to left by Gomez to tie the game. One and one on Aramis Ramirez. Yeah, the other thought, Tom, and, and we didn't bring it up at the time, so it's it, it's almost like second guessing, but if you do have Tony Singrani on your roster, you wanted to use him in relief. He certainly has had enough rest to be able to come back and pitch to a batter if you wanted to do that at the very top of the inning. And I think because Sam LeCure had held right handers to an under 200 batting average. Brian Price decided to go with him. One and one to Aramis Ramirez. And a ground ball to short. And the inning is over. But the Brewers get four to tie the game at five. We're off to the eighth. Reds already had a. We well, are tied at one, I beg your pardon, when Frazier knocked in a run with a single. Vido had an RBI single. After a sack fly RBI by Phillips, Bruce drove one to left center. Brewers committed their second error of that inning. But then in the seventh, down four. Davis a home run to begin the inning. Couple of hits later. Bailey was out. Jeanette an RBI single, Lou Croy an RBI single, Gomez at RBI double to tie it. And that's where we stand. Matt Garza off the hook tonight. 
Seven innings allowed five runs had two big throwing errors. And now the left hander who pitched for the Reds for a short while last season. He Zach did. Duke comes yeah, on. He was a, a left the only one guy pitcher. So he came in in situations to pitch the left handers 14 games last year for Duke with the Reds only 10 innings pitched. Had the same way here for him this year more game appearances than innings pitched. He's got Jay Bruce Mazzarocco and Schumacher. So two out of those three are left handed. Jay Bruce two out of three in the game struck out his first time up has since singled and doubled. And it snaps in there strike one. We talked about how important this road trip is. A team that leads you by eight games in the division. You came out rolling scored in the very first inning. Thanks to a defensive miscue by Garza, but got a big hit by Brandon Phillips with two outs. Took advantage of the Garza error in the fifth inning, scoring four times. But now that lead has vanished. And the Red Soul focus right here and right now is finding a way to score against this Milwaukee bullpen. Two and one to Bruce. Marlins have come all the way back to tie the Pirates. That game is in the 12th inning. Pirates and Marlins tied at six. And here we're tied at five. Sneaks a fastball by him. Everything from that low arm angle right there. Lefty on le lefty. Duke gets his man. Mezzarocco bounced out to third his first time up. He's hit a pair of balls since straight into the air. Fouling out to the catcher. And a pop up to shallow center. Mezzarocco, as hot as he was, has been stone cold of late. Well, you figure he's about due. One and one. There's a rock to just 10 hits in his last 71 at bats. Two away in the inning. Well, we remind you once again, you can win your way to NASCAR Squaker State 400 in the Kentucky Speedway Getaway Sweepstakes aboard the Fan Express. Keyword tonight, rough. Go to FoxSportsOhio.com to enter. And stay tuned every day for a new keyword and a new chance to win. Now Schumacher will bat against the left-hander Duke.
Bit of a hanger there and fouled straight back out of play. Well, the Reds bullpen since getting healthy has been just sensational. That was until tonight. Talked about Lecure and you know, how he's just not seen the same over the last couple of weeks. In the first month and a half, we couldn't get near Lecure. Roxton preparing perhaps for the eight. And we know we're off to the bottom of the eighth in a 5 5 game. Dollars when they take on the Toronto Blue Jays at Great American Ballpark. Buy your tickets today. We've got the fireworks Friday night giveaways over the weekend. But purchase your tickets today. 381 Reds or log on to Reds.com slash tickets. Well, Logan Andrusik only threw three pitches and he's out of the game. In a tie game as we go to the eighth, the Reds are going to bring on the big fella. Having a great year, Jonathan Broxton. Oh, you're not kidding about that. Broxton is having a tremendous year. He's only given up one run all year long, and thus that earned run average of 0 0.44. Well, you normally see Broxton when you've got the lead in the eighth inning. Here he comes into this tie ball game. I think Brian Price realizes, and you know, whether or not you agree with him bringing Broxton into a tie game, it's anybody's decision. But this is a big game. Especially if you consider the ramifications of blowing a four run lead going into the seventh inning. I mean, you earned your way into that lead, and you're thinking, all right, you can smell the barn. And tried to win the first game of this weekend series. And now all of a sudden it gets away from you. And we're tied in the eighth. Well, Davis ignited the rally. He led off the seventh inning with a home run the other way off Bailey. They made it a five to two game, and that is our Nissan drive of the game. Right up in the air. You 
know, Brian Price was asked the other day about Broxton and you know, might he draw a strong consideration for the All-Star game? And it was very interesting. You know, Brian Price saying, hey, look, when this was just a you know, star-studded event and really not much to it besides just the, the competition factor involved, but now with home field advantage in the World Series, and you want guys put into situations that you, know, you want them to be in if you're managing, in this case, a National League team, and maybe you got a one-run lead in the seventh, eighth inning. He said, I don't know how you leave Broxton off the team. Got started the year on the disabled list. As Chris mentioned, the only run he allowed all year long was back when the Rockies were in town, seemingly an eternity ago. Good place to stay right there against Mark Reynolds. Roxton is not allowed to run in any of his last 12 appearances, spanning 11 and two-thirds innings. One and one to Reynolds. Now, Broxton, you may remember on Wednesday, worked an inning and two-thirds. That was his longest outing since 2012 while pitching for Kansas City in a game in St. Louis. Two and one on Mark Reynolds. Breaking ball had Reynolds way out in front. crowd excited but that pitch right there was a slider and the difference between Mark Reynolds getting a slider and hitting it well and a fastball and hitting it well he got that on the end of the bat and only drives it to the warning track they did look a little scary coming off the bat <laughs> Falou for three, line to left his last time up. Ricky Weeks stands in the on deck circle. Pitcher spot Duke due up next. The Reds, if you're taking a peek around the corner to the ninth inning, have Kozart, a pinch hitter, and then Billy Hamilton. Get any further than that, it's Frazier Votto right on down the line. to say if there's one hitter in this Milwaukee Brewers lineup you do not want to walk it is Falou. he does not have a hit so far in 10 at bats Box 
Rush and go. So meanwhile, Ricky Weeks, who has faced Broxton seven times, has three hits against him. Will come to the play with two outs and one on. Weeks pretty much a forgotten man. Signed to a long-term contract. Once was a National League All-Star. Boy, there was that one year, remember Chris, where every time the Reds saw him, this guy was knocking the cover off the ball. Oh, he was beating the Reds with suicide squeezes, late extra inning home runs. He really became the face of the franchise along with Ryan Braun. And you know what to his credit despite the fact that he has been benched and I mean it's straight bench. It's not maybe bench. He's never said a bad word. Never piped up and said I want out of here. I want to be traded. And that certainly says something about the young man who once was an everyday player and a very popular player on this Brewers team. Well, statistically, he's having a better year so far this year in limited time than he had last year or the year before. He had some ankle injuries that really set him back. He never really came back from it. But this year, he's batting 290. Has had a couple of home runs, 12 ribbies. Five game bottom of the eighth inning. Oh, and one on weeks. Runner at first base, two out. And a comebacker to Broxton. That'll do it for the Brewers. Cozart to start things in a 5 5 affair. On the game and brings you the first interviews with Brian Price and the players. Reds Live brought to you by Performance Kings Honda. Hello, John Merrill Hot Dog plays of the game tonight are going to go right to the opposing pitcher, Matt Garza. He's got Todd Frazier all dead to rights right there, but he flips it into center field, and if that's not enough, Look out in the seats. He fires one up into the stands as he tries to field a bunt. Errors galore tonight by the 
Milwaukee Brewers, four of them overall. But we are all tied up at five. And the Brewers closer, Francisco Rodriguez, will come in for the 33rd game this year. Well, we brought up earlier the other game that the Brewers committed four errors in this year it was a game back in April against the Pirates, and they won that game. And they're tied here tonight, and they'll give the ball to Rodriguez, who really was handed the closer's job, much to the surprise of a lot of people around the Brewers, when the regular season began. You may remember they had Jim Henderson closing their games last year and did a great job. Henderson did not have a good spring. Ron Renneke did not like the way Henderson was throwing the ball. And so when the regular year began, Rodriguez was given the ball to close the game. And he's never let up. He's had a great season. A one-time closer for the Anaheim Angels. Bernardino waits on deck. Pitcher spot will follow Cozart and then Billy Hamilton. Cozart tonight, one of two. He scored a run and drawn a walk. Rodriguez may be than any other closer in the entire league. Maybe all of baseball. Throws so many sliders now. He used to have an overpowering fastball. But that's where he gets so many of his outs by guys chasing that pitch, which Kozar did not. Yeah, it's so hard. To, you know, you call it a slider. could be a hard curveball. It doesn't matter. He also throws a changeup. And he gets your internal clock really going fast when he, you see him kind of very slow leg kick and then all of a sudden he kind of jumps at you at home plate and your mind your eyes tells your mind your mind says I better hurry up and you get way out ahead of that breaking ball. Ozark lines it in the left field it'll fall in a base hit. So now Bernardina will be called back from a dugout. And the Reds are going to send up Ramon Santiago. We're sure to butt. I think that was the change up right there that he just left up just a hair. And Kozar negotiates it in the left. Good job by Kozar. He's on base for the third time. Santiago to bat for Jonathan Broxton. Santiago has a pair of sacrifices so far this year. Now Rodriguez falls violently off the mound to the first base side. Great bunt by Santiago, and that'll get the job done. So a good job by Ramon Santiago. You're asked to do a job, and he does it well. He does it early in the count, takes some of the drama out, too. The scary thing about that is that Mark Reynolds is a former third baseman, the first baseman here for the Brewers, and he's not afraid to throw the ball. So if you make a bad bunt to the first baseman, he actually was looking a second to see how far Cozart gotten down that line. So now you turn the line up over and you have some guys coming up. You hope they can drive this run in. It's been a very, very quiet night for Hamilton. Tried to bunt his way on to third, was thrown out, bunted out to first, and has popped up twice. Go ahead, run it second. We're in the ninth inning. Chapman beginning to get loose in the Reds bullpen. J.J. Hoover is already warmed up and ready to go. 
in the Reds bullpen. That's the difference between lead and tie. And a base hit by Hamilton. They are going to wave around Coza. Here comes a throw way offline, and Billy Hamilton delivers with a huge hit in the ninth inning. Well, a quiet night until right now for Billy Hamilton. Zach Cozart moved over to second base on the sacrifice, and he just tried to sneak a fastball right by him. I don't know why you even think about throwing that pitch. Well, Hamilton is glad he did, and then into right field it goes. A strong throw by Ryan Brom, but up the third baseline. And the Reds take a one-run lead. Well, Cozart got it all started with a base hit against their closer. Well, that's got to lift the spirits in that dugout. No doubt about it. And now you're looking for more. Frazier the batter. And Hamilton taking a career. Oh boy, they throw to third. And now they've got him in a rundown. And they cannot finish the rundown. He makes you miss. The second Jeanette came to the third base side of that second base bag and stayed there. You knew they had a chance of Hamilton getting back. Well, it, what you're supposed to do in a rundown is close the gap, mm -hmm. and he does that. But that's when you've got a normal runner in there. He makes you miss. They're paying a lot of attention to him, naturally. And Frazier looks at a pass ball strike one. You like the you like the idea right now of trying to come come to third? Absolutely. Well, Jim Day asked Billy Hamilton about Friday the thirteenth before the game. Billy wanted nothing to do with it. He might feel a little bit differently about Friday the 13th. After that huge hit a moment ago to knock in the go ahead run. Might be a good pitch to go on here. Probably a breaking ball coming up. Jeanette is only standing about two steps off the bag. Hamilton not getting the kind of lead that maybe for him is all that conducive to thinking about taking off. And there he goes. And a throw down a third. Forget about it. It is ridiculous. Well, as soon as he lifted that leg up, and you see how deliberate Francisco Rodriguez is. I mean, if he had a slide step, we would have seen it by now. Hamilton, seven out of eight, stealing third base this year. Got some dirt design. Steve Probably Smith. a bug. You know, you have to wipe them off the windshields. <laughs> That's a good line. So I can give him a drop, see if he can get it out of there. I mean, to tell you, if you're a guy hitting behind Billy Hamilton, I mean, every time you turn or when he gets on base, Wait, he's yeah, got to get on you base. Tell him, I'm Billy, I'm giving you two pitches one to get the second, and next to get the third. Yeah, and now you're standing there with one out and Frazier a chance to knock him in.
And that was a game plan going in. Now, Hamilton had the terrible start the first 10 days, a little less than 10 days, because he got hurt that first weekend. But since then, pretty good. 3 1. And Frazier takes a walk. You know, when he can hit left handed, and, and that was that's not his natural way. But he's hitting up around 280. Yep. Hitting left handed. Now he'll be the first to admit that, that starting to draw more walks will obviously elevate his on base percentage, it'll elevate the stolen base numbers. That will make him a much more well rounded offensive player, but it's still two and a half months in the big league. Uh -huh. Now Vado, runners on the corners. Vado with a chance to give a roll to Chapman just a little bit more breathing room. Tozard the single to begin the ninth. The bunt executed by Santiago. And the single by Hamilton. Who advances to second. Steals third. Walk to Frazier. Nothing in one to Votto with one out. There goes Frazier. And a swing and a foul ball out of play. Well, you pointed out earlier, Chris, when Rodriguez picks that leg up, guys are going to run. Well, he's asking you to steal a base when he does that, really. In his career, he's given up 78 successful stolen bases, only 15 throw him outs. Well, we do know Frazier can run a little bit. He has six of them. For a guy like that, though, he relied for so long on the strikeout. The stolen bases don't hurt you. Still nothing at two on Joey Votto. They've got a fan down there that is playing defense much like the Brewers are tonight. Somebody tried to flip the ball up to one of the kids down there. They dropped the ball twice. Then finally they flipped it to another kid. Brewers have committed four errors in this game tonight. Oh and to the count on Votto. Round ball. And Hamilton. Will stay put. Votto cannot get the run in. Two away in the inning. Brandon Phillips, who has two runs batted in tonight. Had an RBI single in the first, sack fly RBI in the fifth. Runners at second and third. High fly ball. Just outside the infield, and that's all. So the Reds get a run, they miss a chance at more than that. And a Rollis Chapman will come on to try and nail it down. 6-5, Reds in front.
Call on Fox Sports Ohio brought to you by Chevy. Visit your tri-state Chevy dealer today. And by Cincinnati Children's Hospital, ranked number one in the United States in pediatric cancer care. According to U.S. News and World Reports, best children's hospitals in America. Aronis Chapman gets the ball here in the bottom of the ninth inning. He has been better than he has ever been. He's retired 25 of the last 27 batters, 35 of the last 38 batters, including 22 in a row until two days ago. He's gone 10 straight scoreless appearances and has converted eight straight save chances since his only blown save nearly a month ago and in that time tom i think the reason he's been so effective is that he has added another pitch to his arsenal he was always fastball slider rarely a slider in fact sometimes became a one pitch pitcher nothing but fastballs but he's now added the wrinkle of a changeup, and it has been very effective Gene Segura will bat for Scooter Jeanette to lead off the bottom of the ninth. Segura, Braun, Lucroy. One, two, three. In Milwaukee's batting order. Segura, 254 batter, couple of home runs, 19 runs batted in. Had the big season last year for the Brewers. And that one just missed. A slider. Two and one on Gene Segura. Well, this is the first time this year that Chapman has appeared in three consecutive ball games or three days in a row without an off day. Almost looked like the change. It was a slider, and I but think it, it. And it's in days like this that those other pitches, those secondary pitches, are so important to be able to throw them for a strike. High heat. Did he go around? He did. 100 mile per hour fastball for the first out in the Milwaukee night. Ryan Braun, 0 for 3 in a game, is drawn a walk. Oh. <laughs> You're all geared up for the fastball, and you have to be. Nicely by Votto. Two down in the Brewers ninth inning. Oh, he's had a pretty good birthday night. Jonathan Lucroy has. He's had two singles. Both of those infield hits. He is one for seven lifetime against the world of Chapman. Uh, 
Uh, you may remember last year when the Reds got together with the Milwaukee Brewers, it was in August. And it was against the road of Chapman, and it was Jonathan Lucoy who hit that home run to win the ball game. And that one hit is the only one he's gotten off of Chapman. And after that first pitch, little chin music right there, you wonder if Chapman remembers that. That last pitch, a changeup right there. Luke Croy has not seen that before. Back to back changeups. A slider. Really, the only way to tell the slider from a changeup for a roll to Chapman is the slider will move down towards a right handed hitter, the changeup will move away from a right hander. So he's throwing them both anywhere from 88 to 90. So, normal pitchers, good moving fastball. Two and one on Luke Roy. That's straight gas right there. Two balls, two strikes, two outs in the ninth inning. Full count on Luke Roy. One of the best closers in the game. I guess right now, one of the best hitters in the game. With two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Challenge with a fastball again in triple digits and fouled out of play. Ryan Price has been through a lot of these games in this his rookie year as a manager. 25 one run games. This would be number 26. 3 2 pitch. And again, Luke Roy fouls it off. When Luke Roy did hit the home run against Chapman, it was an at bat a lot like the way this one's going right now. A lot of foul balls. Deep into the count. And Chapman looking for a different ending this time. And he got it. slider on a 3 2 pitch to put away Lou Croy. And the Reds have come into Milwaukee and won the opener of this three game series. They have now beaten the Brewers four of five games, and they still have 14 more games to play against these division leaders. A lot of baseball left, a lot of baseball left in this three game set. But this one really set the pace tonight. A gritty outing by both pitchers who didn't seem like they were going to last very long, but they ended up bending but not breaking. Good job by the Reds' bullpen overall after Sam McCurry.